Hi, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a Microsoft Excel video where we'll learn how to make a subtotals table. A subtotals table is just a different way of summarizing data and being able to collapse and uncollapse things and look at subtotals of sections in it. This is if you don't want to go to a pivot table. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is if you're going to do this, you'll want to make a copy of the existing main table to do it with because you'll want to create a specific sort and then you'll want to do your subtotals from that. But you don't necessarily want the original table to be changed in any way. So in this case, I, I'm, I'm not going to make a backup of this particular sheet because this file is just for this video. But ideally, you would want to make a, a, another copy of this. And then on that copy, you would rename the tab and then you would do the work. So that way, the original sales table could remain the same as it is to be able to continue being sorted and resorted in different ways and used as a basis for pivot tables and other things. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called the subtotaling. And in this, I'm going to go ahead and I want to do subtotaling, which will basically chunk areas of the table and subtotal those areas or those segments down for me. So I want to figure out what it is I'm going to want to look at. And probably, let's take a look, the easiest thing I could do would be maybe by categories, mainly because there's only three or four categories. You could do it by, um, you could do it by the region. In this particular case, you could do it by a region, by uh, a, a sales rep, by a state, by uh, a, a product type, etc. But you want to keep in mind that if you're going to subtotal things in a table, you want to keep it simple, especially if the table has hundreds and hundreds of rows. The idea is to be able to get subtotals of really crucial information. And if it, the more information you're going to be putting in that subtotal table, the less likely a subtotal table is going to be what really would work for you. So what do I mean? Let's go ahead and focus on category. There's only a few categories here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure to sort the categories from A to Z. So I can see all the cookery, the food, the ingredients, the seasonings, and those are the four categories. The next thing is that you can't actually create a subtotal table from an existing Excel table object. Apparently, they conflict with each other. So in this particular case, what I need to do is go to my table design and convert my Excel table object, which has all the built-in filters and links all of the columns together nicely, I need to convert it to a normal data range or a normal data set. Now, it looks about the same. It simply removed the um, filters and it broke the, the table connections, so to speak, of the, the records to each other. Doesn't mean you, but what that basically means is if you're going to do any work in here from now forward, you're going to need to select the whole table and then you're going to need to pay attention to what you're sorting or filtering or whatever. Whereas if it was a still a table object, you could just click somewhere in the table and Excel would keep it all together. In this particular case, I'm going to just make this look a little different so you can tell there's a difference. I come up here and I'm going to change this to, oh, I don't know, a dark green. And I'll come down here and I'll change this. So well, we'll keep that the way it is. So the next thing I want to do is I want to actually create a subtotal table from this. Make sure this is green as well. I'm going to select everything. In fact, I'll maybe bring the zoom down just a little bit so we can see better. Select everything. And it's already been sorted by category. And I'm going to come over to the data tab and ribbon, and I'm going to come over to outline. Click this, and the subtotal option will become available. It actually was grayed out when we were in the table version. I should have shown that, but I didn't. But what we want to do is click this, and at each change in order date, no, that's not what I want. Um, use the sum function. What I want is category. Click this and see what we get. Oh, no, I did not want that. Control Z. So let's try what it defaulted to first and see what we're going to get. What did it say? It said date. 
I believe that was. That's not what we want either. No. So see what can, strange things can happen. What I'd really rather have is not have it by order date at all. So let's come back over here. And we don't want quantity either. I really do want it just by this. But at each change in category, and then see what we get here. Aha! This is a little bit more of what I wanted. Ah, but the problem is it really isn't, because what it's doing is it's giving me a lovely sum of the actual category and not of the money. So then once again, I can come back up here and readjust that, add subtotal to not category, but to sales. So I want each change in category to just clump together. And then this should do it. Again, we learn better by making mistakes and seeing what happens. All right, so. What I'm going to do is undo what I just did and do it again from scratch. You select everything. But, you know, part of learning something like this is seeing what can go wrong. So I'm going to click here to subtotal. What I want to do is I only want to see subtotals of categories, but I want to see the sales data. So everything else will be turned off. And just basically at each change in category. There we go. And then when we roll up the table, if I were to scroll down at the end of the cookery, we get a subtotal row, which is this. And in order to make it stand out, just for kicks, I'm going to come up here and see about adding a background color to it so it stands out a little bit more. I'll come down and look for the end of food. Same thing. And then we're going to roll down and see the end of ingredients. And then finally, the subtotal at the end of seasonings. And then this is the absolute subtotal. And I can make this column wider so that I can see the information better. I can maybe narrow up a couple of columns, etc. So that's how we get a subtotal table. But here's what's interesting about it. Right now, the whole thing is wide open. But if you look over to the left-hand side, you see this interesting little interface here, which indicates how this particular table is able to be collapsed and opened. So every time you see a minus or a plus over here, it indicates whether it's open or collapsed. If I wanted to collapse the whole table and see only the grand total, I would collapse everything, which would be this leftmost line here, which is sort of what they call the first level or see everything line. The second line under number two up here is by category itself. So say I didn't want to see every single category. I could close one of the categories like this. There we are. The cookery total. But then I could take a look down here at the food total. Then I could come over here and at ingredients, I could scroll down and find the little minus sign. Where's the minus sign? There we go. And then I could go down to the very bottom and find the minus sign for that. And this is how I'm collapsing the table so I can look at just specific sections, all of the information that's in there, and then the subtotal. The food total is this much. And the grand total is that much. And um, meanwhile, the ingredients total is, is still showing the seasonings total, but just not the detail. And then if I want to see those again, I can go ahead and hit these plus buttons, and it will uncollapse everything. Do this one too. And if I go down to just keep scrolling down until I can see the minus sign on the well, down here, I could collapse the whole table and see only the grand total. Of course, it wouldn't tell me much about the categories or anything, but I could do that. So I'll do that. Now, if I want to come over here, this is very interesting. I could click on number one, which basically combines everything. I could click number two, which basically combines everything, and then I can go ahead and expand from there. 
like this. And then number three basically shows everything. So number two will basically collapse everything down to the second level of the table, which is the subtotals. Number one will select, um, collapse it down to the grand total, and number three will open everything. So this just could be an additional way you can sort information and then see things in a granular detail rather than in a pivot table detail, which kind of crunches and summarizes things down even more. So there you go. That's your subtotals tables.